Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to Woo Bits, a Do the Woo podcast show. Woo! Woo! Well, we're back on track, kicking off with a series of shows from CloudFest Hackathon that I attended in March in an earlier pre-CloudFest episode. We shared what you can expect to see at the hackathon. But I will tell you firsthand that it's an amazing experience. There are so many reasons for anybody in the WordPress and Woo space to participate in the hackathon. I cannot list them all in this particular episode, but I want you to listen in as I was able to talk with a few of the project leads on day two and hear how things were going with their projects. The reason I did this is we'll give you some insights into the behind the scenes at a hackathon. We start with a few of the project leads, giving us an update. And then we end with Lucas, one of the hackathon mentors. He gives us a few thoughts. So listen in. I'm sure you're going to find this very interesting. Hello, I am Andrew Hutchings. I'm also known as Linux Jedi. I work for the MariaDB Foundation. And I am working with my team on a project to integrate our new feature called MariaDB Catalogs with PHP frameworks such as WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, etc. And the general idea of catalogs is containerization inside MariaDB itself. And that means that you have one MariaDB instance running and every customer has their own catalog inside that instance. So the memory is shared. You're saving a lot of RAM that way. You don't have to have... 50, 1,000 different MariaDB instances running, each with using a gig of RAM. You've just got one MariaDB instance running. But you still have each customer siloed, essentially. Now, the whole project we're doing today is to make it easier to administer this, to create new catalogs, to remove catalogs, and things like that. Eventually, you'll also be able to constrain resources per catalog. So you could say that... This is a low-tier customer. They're only allowed so much CPU or so many queries per second, et cetera, and higher-tier customers can have a lot more. So that's essentially what we're doing today. As far as the project goes, so we are just after lunchtime on Sunday. This MariaDB Catalogs feature is still very alpha. We don't actually have an official release even of the alpha yet. So my team are the first people ever to try it, and they broke it. A lot. (laughs) I've had to file seven bugs so far, and there have been people in Finland and places like that trying to fix things for us on the fly. But we have fixed and worked around many of the issues. And as of lunchtime today, we have actually something working end to end where we've got a test that in PHP will create a catalog for you, be able to use the catalog, redirect the customer to the correct catalog, and things like that. We have made progress. We also have a WordPress integration, which is separate. And now we're combining the two right now. We're working on Laravel integration and lots of other projects. By the end of today, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. We should have something very good to show off. Hi, my name is Birgit Olsen. I'm the project lead for the CloudFast Hackathon project for the CloudFast project. Inclusive language checker for open source contributors. And it is scary for me because I'm the first time a project lead uh, from this scope here. And we are currently focusing on improving the workflows for open source contributors, currently specific for WordPress contributors who want to publish content on WordPress sites, especially WordPress.org and WordCamp site, to make sure that they're using and their written content is inclusive and using inclusive wording and highlights also which terms are critical, are not really good to use. And yeah, and the dynamics of the project is really nice and we have a great group setting. We have a a diverse team of about 12 people who are really invested into the idea. We have a part who are developing a plugin, which is as clean and lean enough to be installed also on a WordPress multi-site, but also to be non-destructive 
and non-invasive when you are publishing content, but it gives you a nice overview where you may need to improve your text. Yeah, and currently we're working on an MVP on a basic functionality, but we have also a roadmap which will be published after Cloud for Sekaton. And the other part of the group is currently working on the documentation for the plugin itself, but also setting up our GitHub project uh, repositories where the documentation will live for the moment. And also we are focusing on the underlying structure, like the administrative tasks, so that we can scale the project after the hackathon. Because the goal is that this kind of plugin will scale and offers an easy and clean opportunity to check your content for inclusive language, but also a basic check of accessibility, like hierarchy, and yeah, basically helps you to write better content. I'm Javier Casares. I'm one of the team reps uh, from the WordPress.org hosting team. And in this CloudFest, in the hackathon, we have a project to improve some project inside the WordPress community. Uh, we have some tools around how hosting companies can test the future releases of WordPress. And that's what we are doing. So the first day, I, I didn't know how it, go, it was going to be <laughs> because it's funny because I was here last year and this year it was like, okay, what's going to happen? And we are only three persons in the team. So I think it's most the, the littlest one, but it's been awesome because we are advancing a lot because we had some ideas in the past. A lot of hosting companies asked about doing some improvements and we didn't have the time. So we are advancing a, a lot. The main thing we did the first day, was the main goal, I think, for the whole Cloudfest Hackathon, it was checking multiple versions of PHP in one hosting company. Because usually, some years ago, Probably a hosting company used one PHP version for all the WordPress sites. And now hosting companies give you the option to pick what version is better for you. So that was some concern in the hosting community and in the developer part on how we can test everything in all the hosting companies. That's the first step we did. <laughs> we get that at the end of the day. And today it was like, okay, we need another goal and another step. So we are going to create the multi-environment system because another thing hosting companies have is different services because they have shared hosting, BPS, cloud, and each of that environments are different from each other. And that maybe is different for WordPress, for how WordPress works in, in each one. We are today, we are foc on, focusing on, on that. <laughs> I hope we got, we got there, but yeah, it's, it's been funny. It's, it's more funny. I was very nervous be before coming, coming here. And last week, Carol told me, it's like another contributor day. <laughs> and it was like, okay, I can go with that. So yeah, it's been very funny. I'm Pavel. I'm the Alma Linux evangelist. So I'm obviously with Alma Linux OS Foundation and the project. Of course, we deliver the operating system. And as such, we are maybe not outliers is a wrong term here, but we are a side of this community here. But we are also the foundation of many businesses around here. We produce forever free. That's the best feature of it. The second, and I say it's exact, so it's the same position, that it's community-driven and community-owned. So it's like the system by us, for us. And as it's business, we need a stable platform, the production-grade platform. So we aim to make it robust enough for ourselves and for everybody in the community to use it. 
So now we aim to be ABI compatible with RHEL. Before that, we were cloning it. The recent, let's say, licensing drama made us change the, the way, but it's very good for the project because we can include um, new threads into it. And we, have, we already have results. So we have patches that we will really use in our future beta releases. We discovered some bugs, but in general, it's been productive. We're worried about also our strategy depended how many people will get because we had one of the projects more demanding and we attacked things that we could do with these people that we actually got. As an open source project, we need something that is, has a longer life cycle and makes sense to invest into this. For instance, our, the umbrella name for our two or three projects is Easing OS Upgrades. And that seems a nice idea in general, because when you find out very late in the night that there is a old forgotten box that you just plan to use tomorrow and need, need to upgrade it right now, possibly, or at the best, in place, it is very nice to have such an option. Also, when you have a long-term forgotten instance somewhere in the cloud that you need to upgrade without resources as well, you can do this uh, with our Elevate tool, which is like a pivotal point for most of the hackathon projects. So the two ideas that we had were, one was about CentOS 6 to CentOS 7 upgrade, but this is a big project, so we didn't get enough people to tackle it, to tackle on this one. The other one is making something real world specific. We have an, an WordPress application running on our Alma Linux 7 system, and we are doing the complete OS upgrade including the application, so that we can cover the limitations of handling the configuration and that stuff. These days, when we are constantly pushing towards the bleeding edge, we want the latest and the greatest. And I completely understand the, the industry, because it's newer. You just sometimes cannot get support for the older hardware, and that is the motivation for people to, to go further. At the same time, there are people that know their hardware and they know it was reliable enough to use it. They can assume that the firmware changes are not required for this hardware to, to function under newer releases of the operating system. But there are also people that, possibly from emerging economies, where we can lower the entry barrier for them to be able to just create their own storage systems with lower costs utilizing the hardware that is lying around. But yeah, that's the reality. During the project, we, during this hackathon, we were able to uh, produce a patch for Alma Linux 8. Mm, we already built it, we already validated with our um, box available in our labs remotely. So we have an old LSI card and we just mm. discovered that yeah, it works with the newer kernel, newly built kernel. We're working on Alma Linux 9 patch now which is a bit more tricky. And the thing is, we validated that it works. But what about the future? The future is we need to include it into our testing systems to just test the regression on every major release that we're actually not just delivering the driver, but it's really working. It's, it depends, of course, of, on contributors. So we need people who have this real installation and are willing to dedicate time and possibly effort of maybe recovering, maybe just playing with it. Time will show, but the idea is that it is for the people and by the people, so as an open source project, we need this helping hand coming from the crowd. We need to add it to our rep repos and say, hey, if you want it. So next step will be the betas release, the 9.4 and 8.10 respectively, they will have this patched uh, kernel inside so people can really test if it works for somebody. Then, basing on this feedback, we'll take the decision what's the next uh, state for this project. But yeah, it's, it's very nice because we're also touching El Repo and CentOS Plus patches that were developed to date they have the build switches that, in the kernel that govern building or not the, the extended version with the so-called deprecated PCIDs. And that is, of course, a very helpful 
situation that they have it because we don't have to go over each line of code and, and try to, to add those guards by ourselves, but there are places that we have to do it. We already, we already did this for the patch for eight. And in general, it's, it's again, um, leveraging the collaborative effort, uh, the co community work that is already done. So the path to our understanding will be shorter. We can shout out to these people in our PRs, so it stimulates the emotional part that we're still collaborating. Hey, everyone. So this is Anne. And if you've been following the hackathon, you might guess who I am. I'm the one with the project called Can Everyone Use? Based on the principle of caniuse.com, where you can check if something will work in a certain browser, we're trying to create this central resource about components and libraries and see if they function well in regards to accessibility. And if they don't, what you can do to make it more accessible. It will save you time and it will save your boss time. And you could also probably find out very quickly if the framework you are considering to use is really a good idea. So the project lives on GitHub and partially in a website. We will share it because this is a process, right? So yesterday in the morning, we were pulling out our hair. We're sitting there with a huge team, everybody good at something. We have developers with experience in accessibility, some who do not, some who have a lot of testing experience. How do you set up GitHub? Hey, I'm an accessibility advocate, but I can't set up GitHub for the life of me. It took some time to find direction and uh, who's gonna do what. We have a marketing team, we have a website content team. Our table needed more chairs. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful and it's really scary at the same time because you are doing this project with a lot of people and then you have to let go. Things go out of control and I really hate it when it feels like that. But on the other hand, it's like a joyful goosebumps experience when you do your own thing, and after an hour, people come to you and say, hey, look, we created this. And I'm like, that's magic. That's just magic. And, and the, the, that sense, that feeling of togetherness that you get when you create such a project, I can't describe it. People have to live it. So anyone listening who's never participated in a hackathon before, Sign up next year. Hi, Christian. Can you explain what you're doing at the CloudFest Hackathon? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a director of engineering from SIDE, and I'm leading together with Robert the project managing multilingual content with multi-site, which is quite challenging as a project. Like, I, I went here five times and saw so many projects. You are first time ever at the CloudFest Hackathon. How is it to organize and, and lead a project? Yeah, it's quite exciting. There are many people there from different companies, different agencies, different levels and different sizes. We have a good mix in the team, not only developers, like on a typical hackathon where you just code, basically. That's like what everyone sees from us. So we have a good mix of designers and hosters and two to three people and yeah, even normal WordPress users. So the input is quite good and it's a good team. It's a big team. From the feedback what we already got while we're doing that, we both noticed, or like our, like Torsten is also with us, we noticed that our first step of this topic was a bit too amb ambitious, I would say. Can you give a little bit of an insight where we currently, which routes we already checked while uh, exploring this topic? Yeah, sure. We came with a good preparation because we put some thoughts into that and what we want to achieve and which way we want to go, which was not made in stone, but was open for discussions and input. And basically, we changed everything. So we started from scratch. We got input. We took some steps down and started again. And yeah, the first day was basically just talking, so no code was written, which was also many people hoped to write code, but... Yeah, it was just starting on a blank sheet of paper and just go through the problems people have from different areas and yeah, just simply uh, making it possible that everyone can use multi-site, not only developers. That's the big downside currently because it's quite technical. 
So you need to do many steps and edit files and change constants in WordPress, which is really technical and only for developers. So a normal user will never do that. And so we decided we need to solve first that multi-site is, yeah, it's possible to enable multi-site for everyone. So every user should do that and should be able to do that. And when that is solved, then we can continue. There are many different topics and packages and where we can work in parallel and are not really connected, but going into the final goal. And we're working on that. Yeah, it's interesting because it's not that you start from A and at some point you iterate and go many ways and then you meet at some point. Yeah, and, and as we have experienced so much experience with Multisite as a company, that's why we brought this project What did you learn something like uh, perception wise from other people um, with their perception on multi site? What, what you didn't know before because we like already know so many things about that? Is there one? Was there something? Mm, not really. We know most of the problems and we are aware of that. But since we are developers and working a long time with multi site, we can get around it because we know the problems. So we know how to solve them in an easy way for us and for the clients. But it's Yeah, it's a common problem and we need to solve those problems, not only for us, we need to solve them in the core, basically. So the problems shouldn't be there anymore in the end. That's the goal. So there are many smaller topics like user session management, bad documentation, which is not only code, right? It's documentation needs to be there that people need uh, to be able to read, understand and get used to the concept of multi-site. And it's not that complex in the end, it's just WordPress. Right, and everyone knows WordPress. And if you have one button or link more or less, um, that's not relevant in the end. Yeah, and as we try to, one of the goals is to make multi-site easier to use. And we had the core philosophy of like decision options. Like we had uh, some interesting conversations on the table, like how easy do we do this? Is, can you give some examples like which routes we, we took to discuss those like simplifications of WordPress? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, decisions, not options is it's a nice saying, but it's not always decisions, right? Because you need to have backwards compatible code. And so you cannot always decide because everyone needs to be able to use it right in the end. So it's yes, you can make decisions, but everyone needs to be on board for that. That's like the biggest problem we faced because our first standpoint of view was like, yeah, we turn multi-site on by default and that's it. Then we have multi-site, then we can do it, right? But that's not that easy because we have many single sites, we have many hosting companies which are not supporting multi-sites. And so we need to find a way to convert single sites to multi-sites in an easy way for the end user. So non-technical way again. So the, the easiest way is click a button in the back end and it's done. Right, which also has some technical details in the background which need to be solved. And then we also have the installation of WordPress. So should we install WordPress by default in a multi-site always for new sites? Which sounds easy, but if we imagine that we have the multi-site has new database tables and those are pre-filled with some data. And yeah, that's a few kilobytes. But if we imagine that we have millions of WordPress sites there which are installed then That sums up to a lot of data. That's a decision we could make, but we, keep to, we have to be aware and keep in mind that it's not that easy, right? It's, it's a bigger scope we need to keep in mind. And then in the end, it's also when you're already there and or if you already have a multi-site or you have successfully converted to a multi-site, that's just the first step. You have the multi-site and now you want to manage multilingual content there. So how do we guide the user? How do we uh, connect stuff How make to make it easier? The big term here is network admin, which is a multi-site term for managing global settings. So site settings, users, plugins. And that's just confusing because what is network admin, right? And what is a super admin? What is that role? And it's quite special. Again, lack of documentation. Yes, that can solve that, but we should make it easier, more intuitive to the user. So what are the next steps <clears throat> after after this uh, um, hackathon here? Yeah, currently, for now, currently, we focus on having some screen designs via Figma. So we can also click through them and see like a user journey, user story covered. That's something we want to do on the hackathon now. We also write bit code for testing stuff like they automatically converting single site to multi site. So that's more proof of concept and mm, yeah, let's say hacky code but we want to show that it's possible. 
And all of that will be taken and then we aim for a proposal on make.wordpress to basically suggest introducing multi-site to the masses. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lukas Radke. I'm one of the project mentors on this year's CloudFest Hackathon. So together with we were responsible for picking out those excellent projects we currently have. If I don't work here on the hackathon, I'm a product manager for WordPress VIP. And I'm really happy to be here to see how much stuff actually gets done during the hackathon because there are so many great talents around who really love to contribute to something and bringing them together for 48 hours and enabling them to do stuff they really care about is just amazing to see. And as an example, a few project leads already approached me and said, hey, Lucas, this is so great. You've brought so many great projects and members for the teams. We even needed to adapt the scope because... Otherwise, we would be done in 24 hours instead of 48. So they extended the scope, added more stuff, thought about, okay, how can we really use all the skills of everyone joined? Because not everyone is just a PHP developer, a Node developer or something, but also non-developers are around, marketeers, people who can write good documentation, people who look at accessibility and inclusion and stuff. And so each team has like multiple work streams and at the end they're going to get it to a great project. I can only recommend everyone to apply to the CloudFest Hackathon because it's really a one time in a year opportunity to get together with greatly minded people like yourself and simply do something that otherwise won't be doable. So we have sponsors that covers everything for you. You get nice food, a great hotel, and you can work together with some really great people. Well, again, it's hard to put into words the experience you'll live through by attending and participating in a hackathon like this one. Stay tuned for a bit more on the hackathon. And do consider being at CloudFest Hackathon 2025. Until the next time. Bye.